Anybody want to do their jig from this week? Come on up. back up in just a second. Talia, you want to take Kinsley with you? Take Kinsley. Grab her hand. Oh, she can stay. Listen, this is just a family va uh, vacation Bible school celebration, so I want all the kids to feel totally comfortable wherever they are. Moms and dads, you don't have to grab them. You can let them run around. Maybe everybody can watch the exits, and we'll work together. <laughs> um, yeah, she can have a balloon, too. Um, so we're just, uh, this morning we're celebrating obviously our Vacation Bible School. Our sanctuary doesn't always look like this. Uh, this is a celebration and culmination of a wonderful week of activities and learning and growing strong with God. Um, so this week we had uh, 25 students, uh, campers that were part of this. We had about um, a dozen teenagers and youth helping us and another dozen adults that were here working on the stations and the different crafts that we had. We had an imagination station that talked about science and different experiments that we got to do. Uh, so it was a truly, truly blessed week. And I want to take this moment because sometimes I forget in the midst of things and I just really want to thank all of the volunteers um, and especially Vicki who is our office admin it is not part of an office admin at a church job description to be doing vacation Bible school um, but both her and Brittany have kind of just set this course for us and really helped us get organized worked on registration um, communicated with families uh, did the outreach and the media and all that stuff so we're very very grateful for that outpouring of help and then we had station leaders that were part of the week so if you were a station leader if I, you could just stand up so we could recognize your work this week stand up if you were a station leader of vacation bible school stand up stay standing stay standing if you were a youth volunteer or another volunteer and you were here floating or helping or doing first aid or whatever, please stand up so that we can recognize you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We would not be able to do this program without you. So, Ms. Gale. Officially, I'm the only one that has to do that here, though. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, it was just, it's truly a joy. It's, it's one of the most tiring weeks of the summer, um, but also one of the most fulfilling. And one of the things I was telling the young people about was um, making sure that they know that this is a home and that this is a place that they can be comfortable with. And my background in youth ministries, I've always told people, I want you to feel like you've come home when you step foot in the door of our church. Um, everything from finding yourself around in the kitchen to um, letting people know if something's broken or if something needs to be uh, attended to. These kids really do feel like this is their home now, and I thank you for that because that's hospitality. That is radical hospitality, and that's what we should be focusing our ministries here at Calvary on. So this morning, I want to welcome you to worship. Um, I invite you to find the welcome cards that are in the, in the pockets in front of you. Uh, that is our way of recording our participation in worship this morning. Uh, your participation is an offering, so as the offering plates come around during our offering time, please place those cards in there. And on the back side, if there are any prayers that I can be in prayer with you, 
Uh, a lot of people don't think those get read, but on Monday morning we go through all of those cards. And uh, my previous churches, people like to leave me just funny notes or drawings, appropriate drawings, people, okay? Um, but jokes and things like that, so feel free to use that space uh, to communicate with me. Sometimes in the mornings on Sundays there's a lot going on, so I don't grab everything. That's a great place to communicate with me is on those prayer cards. So uh, with that, I'm going to invite you guys into a time of preparing your hearts and your minds for a fun and energy-filled worship. I'd like to invite you to stand for our call to worship and remain standing for our opening song. When the heart of the world is hard to hear, God's love helps us stand strong. When we feel sad, hurt, or alone, family and friends help us to stand strong. God, when we need you, family stand strong. When, when the troubles of this world get to us. Trusting in God helps us to stand strong. If the kids would like to come forward, they're welcome to for this song.
guys can just sit right where you are. Just sit right where you are. I can't. Oh, there I am. Looking for my bulletin. So, our ministry invitations and celebrations. I've already said a lot. I've given our thank yous. Um, I just want to remind those of you that came in, kids can run where they want. It doesn't matter. Okay? We're just going to watch all the exits. Okay? Um, so those of you near exits, that's your job. Make sure no kids escape. Um, but we all, uh, also want to welcome you to our picnic right after this. Uh, I'll say a blessing at the, end of the, at the end of the service, and then you guys can go out and eat. You don't have to wait for me to come back and do a second blessing. Um, some other invitations that I'd like to bring to your attention in the bulletin. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, still in the in the life of the church this summer uh, we do a monthly love offering and so the monthly love offering for June was for Shepherd Staff which is an organization in the Carroll County area that provides um, items to families in need and one of those items that we're collecting right now are school supplies so if you want to check our outreach corner in the back you can see all the school supplies that the kids collected this week during vacation Bible school so we'll keep that collection maybe for another week or so that way if you guys want to bring things next week you can as well um, I won't be with you next week because I will be driving to Frostburg for Camp Hope. Um, so Miss Renee will be preaching for me on, on that morning, and we're very grateful for our lay leadership, Art and Renee, tag and, and help me out often, so I really appreciate that. But that's just a celebration um, that our Camp Hope group is going to be going. And it wasn't planned, but since we have two of the leader, three of the leaders that are going, um, four of the leaders, because Randy's here too, I would like you guys to come up and Thea, anybody else is going on Camp Hope, come on up here. We don't do this. We don't do this very well. We don't commission our mission teams, which we should. So commissioning is a very important part when you send out missionaries. And since you have all these kids here, if you don't mind, just have a seat on the step right here. All you kids, I want you to come around and surround us. I'm one of the leaders too, but I'm going to help you guys pray right now. Um, so these folks are brave. Mariah's out tending the girl, I think, so she's going as well, and then Parker's going, and we've got um, the Payne's grandsons are going, and Thea's got a bunch of lacrosse girls that are coming with us. Um, so our prayers go out to all of the volunteers that are going. All you guys have to do is just put your hands kind of just out. If, you, if you're comfortable, you can put your hand on their head. You can. I promise she's, she, she's probably taking a shower. Yeah. And we're just going to pray for you guys and ask for God's blessing upon you for this mission trip for the people that we will encounter and the ways in which you guys will be serving, um, go with God's love and with Calvary's support. So will you pray with me? Lord God, we give thanks for the opportunities that you have given us to serve and to be faithful in the mission and outreach that you've called us to. For the families and individuals that we will encounter in Frostburg, we ask that you be with us in the grace and the hope and the peace that we are able to bring by repairing homes, uh, making lives more comfortable, and just bringing a little bit of hope. We also, Lord, ask that you open the eyes of our young people and let them know that this is something they can do for the rest of their lives, that they can continue to serve and give of themselves each and every day. And so with this, Lord, we pray and we ask your blessings upon us. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Thank you so much. No, not you guys. Sit down. You're not done. We still have to do, we, we still have another song, the one that you guys wanted to do. Right, okay. Uh, so a couple other announcements. I was just so excited about these guys being here all week and having the church filled. And typically we don't do VBS, or I, I haven't done VBS this early in the summer. So we have planned two family movie nights, uh, the third Sunday evenings of the month. Um, because this is the air-conditioned space in our building, it, they will be in here. Um, and we're going to say we're providing the snacks for the little viewers, but adults are welcome to bring whatever they'd like if they'd like to bring something to share. Uh, movie titles will be TBD for licensing regions, but they'll all be PG, so we invite you to bring the kids. Um, it'll be a fun night of fellowship, and that's something that we can kind of invite all our friends back from VBS throughout the summer. And then um, our preschool uh, is continuing, and I just want to introduce Jeannie, who's here. Uh, she's our director, and her daughter Talia was part of our VBS this week, but also a couple other students from this preschool program. Um, has expanded. They're doing a two-year-old program, so it's now two-year through pre-K, uh, getting those kids ready for kindergarten. I was at the kindergarten, uh, or the graduation, end-of-the-year celebration, and they have done a spectacular job of preparing these kids for kindergarten next year. Um, so if you're in education and you know how important those steps are, a lot of that was lost during COVID because these kids were essentially at home. 
And so that was a huge undertaking for Jeannie and her staff, is to get these kids ready for kindergarten. And they, were, they did a spectacular job. So congratulations, and we're so very grateful to be in this partnership with you. So with that, I do have a little quick slideshow that I wanted to show the parents and grandparents and everybody here of our week. So we're going to watch that, but you guys are going to get ready to get a little crazy. And I want to remind you that it's not just high fives here, but there's lots of people in this room that you don't know now. But I want you to be careful that you don't run over anybody, okay? So that's my disclaimer for that song. But let's go ahead and watch our slideshow from this week.
Mighty God, you have poured down on us all manner of gifts and blessings. The ledger of our lives is so overwhelmed with your goodness that we struggle with how small our offerings to you seem in comparison. The gospel reminds us that not even the smallest act of mercy and compassion, a cup of cold water, will go unnoticed by you. Give us the eyes to those who in need, the ears to, to hear those who cry for justice, and the hearts to comfort those hurting and grieving. If we all were to offer a cup of cold water, the world would be flooded with compassion. We ask this in Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Join me in the innocent prayer. We thank you, God, for drawing us to this place and time and for interrupting us with your gift of life in Christ. Whether we have heard the news many times over or are this day listening with brand new ears, surprise us with your justice and righteousness that our lives might turn in the right direction. Startle us with your goodness and mercy, that we might receive your empowering forgiveness. Stagger us with your hope and peace, that our eyes will remain wide open as we leave this place, wondering what you will be doing this week in our home and in us.
creator, redeemer, and sustainer. That whom we pray to this morning, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers that are on our hearts. For the ones that are deep down and hard to wrestle with, to the ones that are joyful and celebratory, as the smiles on our children's faces giving high fives to random strangers. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless this space for families and for children to come and feel at home, for a place that we can continue to nurture our community around us and provide space for those in need of solace, of quiet, but also for the joy of noise and celebration. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us with the missions and outreach that you've called us to. We ask blessings over those school supplies in the back of our sanctuary. May they bring some joy and some uh, relief to families in our community. We also lift to you our July offering, Lord, and ask that you bless that likewise. For you have called us to care for each and every one of us in our communities. As we reach out to our prison ministries, Lord, we remember that those two are people that we support and care for as they are incarcerated for reasons beyond our knowledge nor our care, but that we support them and that we ask that you continue to bless them with all that they need. Lord, we give thanks for the ways in which you've drawn us together, families and friends, community members and partners, in all these ways, Lord, we call upon you to hear our prayer that as we fall down, we have you to pull us up and your strength to give us strength for the next steps. As we lift that prayer, your son Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 through 28. True and false disciples, and the wise and foolish builders. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because its foundations were on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the world that we live in today, it can often feel like we're constantly being tossed and turned by the waves of uncertainty and chaos. In the midst of these challenges, it's crucial that we find our strength and stability in a firm foundation. It's no secret that this week's theme was teaching kids how to stand strong with God. So let me just test this out. On our first day, we met Truman, our Bible buddy over there. He's a bulldog. He teaches us that love helps us to on Tuesday, we met Duke, the mighty Clydesdale, who was able to pull his friends and family anywhere they needed to go. And Duke taught us that friends and family help us to stand strong. On Wednesday, we met Swift, and Swift is a falcon. 
And I didn't know this about falcons, but they can fly up to 200 miles per hour, which we discovered very clearly that Pastor's Beth, Beth, Pastor Beth's car does not go that speed. But they can fly at 200 miles an hour diving for prey. And I would have to think if I was going that fast in something, I would be using prayer a lot. And so Swift taught us that prayer helps us to on Thursday night, the night that you saw my, my therapy dog, Kaiser, here, who is actually a Leonberger, who is a, a lion-like dog, he was our Sir Valiant for the night, and we met Sir Valiant, the mighty lion. And he taught us that trusting in God helps us to stand strong. And on the last night, we met Victoria. She's in the window up here next to me. She's a sly little red fox. What did she teach us? What was the last one? Aurora, stop answering the questions for the kids. <laughs> okay, kids, what was it? The Bible, the Bible helps us to stand strong. I wanted to make sure they remembered. Well, guess what? I just read Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew. There are four books in the Bible that tell us about Jesus' story. It's the same story four different times, four different voices, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew is our accountant. He was a tax collector, and he liked to use patterns and, and, and things that would make people think. He used a lot of numbers and a lot of riddles in that way. And so Matthew, if you like accounting, would be a great gospel to start in. Matthew 7 reminds us in a very pivotal part of Jesus' ministry, this is what happened on the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus laid out all of these rules and all of these ways of life. At the end of that speech, at the end of that teaching to those thousands of people on that hill, Jesus reminded us of the importance of building our world, our lives on solid ground. He said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, which is what these kids have learned this week. In this passage, Jesus encourages us not only to hear his words, but also to put them into practice. It's not enough simply to know the teachings of Jesus. We must actively live them out in our everyday lives. And by doing so, we establish a strong and unwavering foundation that can withstand the storms that come our way. In a world filled with shifting values and ideologies, Standing strong requires a firm commitment to the truth and principles found in God's word. It means making choices that align with his teachings even when it's difficult or unpopular. It means loving others as ourselves, showing kindness and compassion to those around us. It means seeking justice and speaking up for those oppressed and extending a helping hand to the marginalized in our communities. When we build our lives on the teachings of Jesus in this way, we gain a sense of purpose, a sense of peace and resilience. One of the things I had to reconcile in my own life is the storms do come. The storms will come. But in this confidence, in these teachings, we can find that confidence in which we are able to stand strong in knowing that our foundation, our community, is unshakable. We can weather the challenges of this world standing strong. Go ahead. Stand strong! <laughs> now she doesn't do it. In the faces of, of adversity. So my dear friends, let us continue to draw inspiration from this passage, but also from the words of these children, whether they're enthusiastically participating, or maybe a little shy. Let us be like the wise builders who constructs their house on a rock, rooted in the teachings of Jesus. Let us put those teachings into practice and let our children see us do that every day, living out our faith in a way that brings light to the darkness and hope to those around us. May we find strength and courage and the unchanging truth of God's word as we navigate the ever-changing world that we live in and know that God will always help us to stand strong. Amazing.
amazing. This morning, as we celebrate communion together, um, we do communion a little differently since the days of COVID. Um, we recognize that there's still flus going around and also some COVID cases in our community. Um, so we have uh, what I like to call communion kebabs. Um, you'll receive one. And I remind you, in the United Methodist Church, this table is open to everybody. You need not be a member of this church or any church. All I ask is that you want to grow closer in your relationship with Jesus. You've heard these words. You're, you're in it for the game. You are welcome to this table. We have gluten-free elements as well. When you come forward, the servers will give you a piece of communion elements, and you'll return to your seat, and we will continue the liturgy together and take the bread and the cup, the grape, together. So will you all pray with me? Heavenly Father, in the ways that you have given us this promise, in the ways in which you have given us your son Jesus in his fullness and in his human form, but in his full divinity, and he came to us and gave us these words, these promises of strength, even in the midst of trials and tribulation. You have given us so much to promise, so much to look forward to, so much to gain strength from. But sadly, Lord, our love has failed you. And when we have failed, your love has always remained steadfast with us. And so in this moment, Lord, we acknowledge our humanness. We acknowledge the brokenness in our world and in our own lives. And we call upon you to hear our prayers of confession. For the ways in which we have fallen short of these promises, Lord, help us, strengthen us, give us that which we need to face each trial each day each storm in our lives, and helping us to stand strong. Lord, you have given us so much, and oftentimes life gets so busy and we forget. So in this time of communion, Lord, draw us together. I invite, Lord, your Holy Spirit to pour out upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ as we celebrate this holy sacrament together. Amen. I invite my servers to come forward.
On the night before meeting with death, Jesus gathered with his disciples in that upper room, facing what he knew was about to happen, but they didn't. He shared that meal with them. He took bread, he broke it, he gave thanks to the Lord and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to the Lord, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts through Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves followers of Jesus. And so this sacrament is the outward expression of that inward grace that Christ has given each one of us. And so we go today as children of God, as brothers and sisters of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand, and I invite the kids to come back up to lead us in our closing song. Before we play that song, our blessing will be for the blessing of the food, so no one has to wait for me outside at the picnic. Um, just want to thank those of us, uh, those volunteers that were helping with the picnic and those that are already out there cooking. Uh, so there's burgers and hot dogs for everybody. There's plenty of food, so even if you didn't RSVP, you are welcome to join us. And um, thank you guys so much for being here for our Vacation Bible School uh, celebration. Will you pray with me? Lord God, for this day and for the ways in which you have blessed us, we give thanks. We give thanks for these children and for the, the celebration that we are able to have in light of your message and your words of standing strong. And so bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies, for the hands that have prepared it, for the fields to the table. We give thanks in all things. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's do it. This last one's...